Jennifer's two. Jennifer's What are you doing? Hello. 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 All right, let's take a breath and come on in to the experience. And then ask yourself, would an infinite being choose this? Would an infinite being choose this? Would an infinite being choose the time and the place to, to be together, to recognize again who they really, really are? And also remember that you're giving up judgment, you're letting judgment go. And now you no longer have judgments, you just have an interesting point of view. <laughs> you know, I was talking to somebody last night and that was, it was like they were, all, they, they were tempted to get into a debate about a point. And, as soon as I find myself in a situation where someone's getting ready to debate me about something I've just said, I realize that, uh, first of all, it, I, I don't, pretty much I don't enjoy it. It's not that it's wrong or bad, I just don't enjoy it. I, I, when, I, when I was honest with myself, I don't really enjoy it. You know, trying to prove my point is right and your point is wrong, or whose point is right or whose point is wrong. It really doesn't matter. So I try to get right back to the point that we're joined as quickly as possible. And, I, and that's what I basically said very rapidly. Hey, it's just my point of view. <laughs> that's all. That's it. Don't have anything to do with necessarily it has to be the only way to do it or the best way to do it or whatever. I'm choosing for peace right now. The other thing I'm trying to remember in my life is to stay in the present moment. That the present is the point of power. That anything that I'm going to change in my experience, anything that I'm going to make different in my experience, anything that I'm going to take in a different way, uh, direction it has to happen when? Now. 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 Right. You know, so the present is the point of power. You know, you know, when do spiritual cats want it? You know, spiritual cats want it now. <laughs> That's when they want it. I want it now. So I'm not into uh, happiness in the future. I think happiness in the future is a crock. It just hints at punishment until you can really have what you want and enjoy it. Mm -hmm. It's just it's just giving you a big huge space where you don't have the thing that you want, you know. And the fastest way to get to it is to ask for what you already have because if you ask for what you already have, you're guaranteed to receive it, and you're guaranteed to receive it instantaneously because you already have it. You know, if I ask to experience a camcorder, then I have it right now. Well, I already have the love of God. I already have the truth. I already have consciousness. I already have relationships. I already have a life. So I ask for more of what I already have. Um, and when I forget that, and I often do forget that, then I don't beat myself up about forgetting it either. <laughs> you know, so I, I don't do that as much as I used to in the past. The other thing is it's very important to realize that you're not the one to, to figure out the how, that how is not your business. How something is going to happen isn't our business. That's not our business. And that's what the average human being is always trying to figure out, is how something's going to happen. And th that's what God takes care of. That's what the universe takes care of, is the how. So we're, we are here to ask. We are here to live in the question. We are here to remember to ask. And to remember that asking is not taking. Because I ask you for something, that doesn't mean I'm taking anything from you. Because I ask something of spirit, doesn't mean that I'm taking anything from spirit. As a matter of fact, asking actually creates a space where I can be answered in. So it's really about the asking. You'll be amazed that when you're feeling upset about something, that in that moment or less than a moment or 10 or 15 seconds that you take to ask for a way out of it or to ask for another way to look at it or to ask for what you want to show up, in that moment of asking, you're actually feeling peace. You might want to try it sometimes. You'll find that while you're asking, you're not figuring. So just in the asking, you're feeling more peace. Um, and don't worry about it. nothing you see means anything. Nothing you see means anything. What does that mean? It means you're giving everything you see all the meaning that it has for you. That nothing in and of itself means anything. You're the one that's giving it all the meaning that it has. That it has. So it's important to stop making things so significant and to recognize what does not matter. <sighs> recognize what doesn't matter. Uh, letting go of judgment. Um, <clears throat> Realizing that discrimination and discernment, sometimes what they do is they, sometimes we use judgment and discernment to lock out the solution that we're looking for because we have a 
very conclusionary approach to what we are doing, which means I've already decided and come to the conclusion it should be this way, so therefore I'm excluding any other solution or help that could come to me outside of the conclusion I have formed. So we are, we are taught to be very conclusionary, but actually conclusionary thinking blocks a lot of the help that you could get to have situations and circumstances solved in your life. The other thing is there is no right time. Get moving now. Start. Move toward it. You know, that, that waiting for just the right moment before you start to do something is another trick. You know, get it moving. Get it started. It's more like when you watch those movies on TV when people are trying to get to a treasure and they give you one clue that leads you to another clue that leads you to another clue or breadcrumbs that keep you moving toward the goal. The truth represents the breadcrumbs. <coughs> moving on what you're recognizing right now is moving toward the next breadcrumb. That's another good thing. Another one is there is no competition. There is no competition. There's no competition. The whole idea of competition is what's blocking us anyway. You are a powerful individual with your own individual spiritual path. You have a voice for God and truth inside of you to guide you. The reason why you don't hear that voice is because you're listening to a voice you made up or learned from the world. And when you listen to the voice that you've learned from the world, you can always tell because you won't feel happy and fulfilled and peaceful. So if you're not feeling completely happy and fulfilled and peaceful, you're still listening to the voice you made up. Okay, so there is no competition. If you follow your spiritual path, there is no competition because it's your own individual curriculum, so there's nobody else to interfere with it. <sighs> Period. Um, if you want a relationship right now, and you think you're ready for that form of punishment, um, <laughs> 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 You've been particularly bad this week. You know, whipping your butt enough by yourself, you need assistance. <laughs> uh, people think I'm anti-special relationship. I'm, I'm anti-pain and fear. Uh, I'm not anti-relationship. I'm anti the way we do it. That's what I'm done with, is the way we do it in the world, you know. It's like, uh, I, I was talking to, again, I'm always talking to people that's giving me the truth, and I was talking to a person we were talking to yesterday, and they said, well, I go through this thing about figuring out, well, if I got to, if I got to learn my lessons through relationships, um, <clears throat> and sometimes I see how I hurt myself through my attitude to a relationship, does it mean I need to stay out of one in order to recognize the truth about what's true, or do I try to do it from within it, the relationship? And the thing that came back to me to say to them was, well, really, if you are taking the same attitudes and teachings and learnings that you got from the world about there is not enough and the bargains and the compromises and the lack of freedom that people tend to give themselves in relationships, and you're still trying to act that out from within a relationship, well, you're going to still get the same result anyway. So, so staying in a relationship, doing the same thing in the relationship doesn't make any sense. But what we're trying to change is a thought system which is the way that we're looking at the relationships and the way we're acting within our relationships and the attitudes that we have. And what makes it so difficult is that love is freedom and we've learned that, lo that love is limitation. So that's the problem, <laughs> yeah. Love is freedom and we've learned that love is limitation. That if you love me, the first thing that we're gonna do is come up with a bunch of agreements and boundaries and limits that we're gonna put on each other to define what the love is. That's face it, y'all know that's what we do. You know, if you love me, you're not gonna do this, you're not gonna do that. And I say that over and over again. You know why I, I, people come to my class and I always bring this up? First of all, I do it because I'm in a world that you just don't hear it. So if I don't make sure I hear it, then I'll fall for the trap that I see many people fall for. Now, you are free in any relationship that you are keeping the agreements and the relationship that you are making out of your own free will, which is different. Like if you're choosing to do something out of your own free will, then you truly are still free no matter what the structure is you put on it because that's what you're choosing to do. So I'm not talking to, to those of you out there who need lots of boundaries and rules and agreements. Then you owe it to yourself to, to really state those and really honor those. Are, are we clear on that? Yeah. That if those of you, because those of you who need those, then you won't allow yourself to feel safe enough to let the love come through you until those agreements are met. You know, if your condition is that I'm not going to give you any love unless you don't go out to lunch with any other person but me, and that person says, okay, I'm not going to do that if you don't do the same thing, 
then you all will feel safe in that agreement and then you'll feel like you can really open your heart to the other person and let them feel your conditional love yeah. more than anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> right? Am I, are you with me yeah. on that? Okay. So, t so realize another thing that if you're ready for one, all you got to do is say, I am ready to learn. Just say that to the universe. I'm, I'm ready, ready to, learn. to learn. If you're ready to learn and you're sincere about being ready to learn, the relationship, the Course of Miracles teaches that a relationship will be held out to you if you're really ready to learn. And you can tell a relationship that's sent to you by Holy Spirit, which is your higher self, by one quality. The way you are now will be perfect for that person. So they will not come trying to change you. They will come saying, I'm grateful you are you, and the way you are is the way I need a person to be. It's not saying you're both not going to continue to evolve, but they're not coming to you with the changes you need to make at the very beginning for them to feel connected to you. Okay. Um, also, another thing is that love will come to you through whoever's willing to give it to you. So you never have to feel like because one channel or person for love, it ceases that love isn't going to get to you from another direction. As a matter of fact, the only reason why it's, it, 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 it stopped through that person is that now it's time for you to come, come to you in a higher form, a better form, a more enjoyable form, and a form that's better than the one you had before. Sorry, if you're a conscious being, your relationships get better to you because you should have a little bit more sanity going into this one than you did going into the other one. That alone should equal improvement. Right. You know, that alone should equal improvement. Okay, so don't worry about having people in your life to love. All you have to do is remind yourself that you're ready to learn. If you're ready to learn, a relationship will be offered out to you for you to learn. And I've said this the last few weeks, too, that whoever you are, wh whatever level you can love on, uh, you are a step up for somebody. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Yes, there's, 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 for somebody would say you are the best thing that they've ever had just the way you are right now because you would appear to be a more loving person than what it, they've experienced so far. So there's somebody praying for you right now. Oh, good. For real? <laughs> yeah, they really are. They really are. Wow. They, 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 that's right. <laughs> That's right. They said, I need, to, I need to see that. I need to have a juicy white woman with white hair, with glasses on, with blue clothes on right now. I need, <laughs> I need to have I need a bag. I need a bag. That's right. And she better not walk too fast. That's a, that's a condition of my love. That's right. That's right. I know that's true for me. I tend not to be with hikers. I don't know. I don't know. All right. So, so I'm I want to very quickly state, um, oh yeah, another thing to keep in mind is don't listen to and don't buy the story. It's time to let go of the story. It's time to let go of the story unless you're going to use the story as a mean for you to wake up or unless you're going to use the story as an example that you're sharing with somebody to go toward a solution that is going to be presented. But the story, for the sake of the story, the story has to go, Earl. The story has to go. <laughs> you know, like I'm getting a chance to test out my fear and to, and to, tap, to tap into the truth right now. You know, I'm going to go, um, I'm still going to have class, but I'm going to go to London for 10 days. And, and, um, and I'm leaving a week from Tuesday to speak at an International Course in Miracles conference over there. Wow. And it's been my first time in Europe, right? Wow. So I, I'm pretty much a homebody for the most part. By homebody, I kind of mean the whole United States. And... <laughs> And of course, when I get ready to go over there for the first time, there's a big terrorist alert. <laughs> that's going on. But that, and that was the first thing I saw on my computer when I looked at it this morning. NPR News, terrorist, terrorist alert. <laughs> Warning all American travelers that's getting ready to go over you. There's something, <laughs> there's something plot, they're planning something. Oh no. no. And I'm like, of course. When I get ready to go, and then that whole terrorist thing, you know what I'm saying? So and then and then so a part of me like felt that fear that wanted to come up around that. And then another part of me went, well, you know, it's my time, it's my time, it's my time, it's my time, and it don't make no difference, it's my time, it's my time. But I've always told myself, it wasn't death that frightened me, it was suffering. Yeah. You know, it's like, you can go ahead and take me out, but don't take my legs and my yeah. arms. <laughs> Just do it and then, that. And then, and then, and then leave me there. And then you leave me one arm, and it's the wrong one. <laughs> Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha